who dumped loads of manure outside the, the girlfriend's house and cut ties up and suits up. Um, and I bet if you talk to those women, they'd never thought they would be like that. We don't know exactly how much adultery there is because it's something people would rather keep secret. Evidence of the mess it leaves behind, though, is provided by the divorce statistics. A third of all cases cite adultery. We know adultery is wrong, but call it an affair and we're fascinated. We condemn it and yet we tolerate it, as long as our lives are unaffected. Nicola Carr's law. Uh, many of tomorrow morning's front pages lead on news of the uh, Beverly Allard inquiry. Did our babies need to die in the Daily Express? Other tabloids have other lead stories. Uh, an interview with the widow of the policeman who was uh, stabbed to death. Peddling a big smack. Today's investigation into alleged drug dealing at uh, uh, McDonald's hamburger chain. Jury sports caning father. A father cleared of assault for caning his son. Uh, hospital blamed over alec killings uh, is the uh, lead story in The Independent. Vital. Alec clues were missed is The Guardian's uh, got the same lead. And price fixing by doctors is banned is the story in uh, the front of the Daily, Express, uh, the Daily Telegraph. Consultants overcharging to be halted in The Times. Uh, USA Today, um, US-Japan trade talks flop, and uh, generators in deal to sell off plants to the FT. Uh, that's it. Uh, we'll be back on uh, Monday at uh, half past ten, usual time, of course. Uh, until then, have a wonderful weekend. Good night. Warfare, brutal violence, villains lift the lid on the underworld. We had what we called a torture box here. It was an old field telephone. We slung Bunny in the bath of water and they started putting the wires on him and turning the handle and he was screaming blue murder. Tied a piece of cloth around his mouth to keep him quiet. Just carried on with the handle and that. You've got all this to do, you do it. Otherwise you'll able to wind up on the torture box as well. The chilling truth about the underworld, Wednesday 9.30 on BBC One. How dark is dark and why do we alter our clocks? Answers to be found in the Ferguson theory in half an hour. First on BBC Two, more serious comments on last week's performances in the Fantasy Football League. And there it is, the final whistle and they're out. It's all over. Oh, it's a sad moment this. Who would want to be a football manager? Fantasy Football League. Sorry about all the mess, but we've been celebrating for two days. <laughs> Sato. Sato! Sato! Wake up! Wake up! Uh, when did Bolton last qualify for the fifth round of the FA Cup? <laughs> Wednesday. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this week, we'll be giving you the Cup results. We can uh, Give it to Campbell again. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, uh, we'll be meeting guest managers Roddy Dole, Richard Littlejohn and uh, Basil Brosh. We'll be recreating the moment when time stopped in the Argentinian World Cup. Whew. And we'll be saying a big hello to Alan Birchinal. Hello there. I'm Alan Birchinal. Oh! <laughs> Alan Birchinal, whose best mate is the bloke out of Shawaddy Waddy.
<laughs> Always worth knowing, I think. Anyway, some things we noticed from watching football this week. Everyone was very happy to see Francis Lee wearing the city colours at Main Road this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't changed a bit at all, all right? Right? He looks great on it. And Villa versus Leeds was a great game, wasn't it? <laughs> Ron Atkinson obviously thought so when he moved from the dugout to get a better view. <laughs> there he is. I can't he always sits there. there. He always sits there. Apparently, Dave Bassett sits in a shed three miles from the ground. <laughs> Not a bad position, really, I would have thought. Even, even Ron's own players clearly didn't want him to have to see how bad the match was. <laughs> and Justin Fashnu was in the news this week. Lovely trophy he's got there. No doubt later on he'll be sticking it in the cabinet. <laughs> what? What? I've split the audience in two now. A strange mixture of boos and applause. I didn't get it, personally. But carry on. And in Italy, referees complain that the studs on modern football boots are dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> and David Seaman got a bit of a headache at Highbury this week. As you probably guess, there's no joke on that one. Well, we just wanted to show the goal. <laughs> yeah, well done all the underdogs this week for knocking out uh, Newcastle and Blackburn and Leeds, but mainly Arsenal. Yeah, mate. <laughs> Thanks for that. Yeah. So, sorry again about all the mess. Uh, I guess managers stayed overnight this uh, week, so at least we don't have to worry for once about them coming to the door in the middle of an exciting bit of football on the telly. Uh, Mother, Mother, you've missed a bit over there, just behind Ken. I wish you wouldn't talk to us like that, you know. And now the latest Fantasy League news, it's over to Stato. Yes, I've been working on a video roundup of all the best action of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Only two clean sheets in the Premiership mean minus points all round, but a glut of goals help balance things out. Roy Hattersley stays top, but the gap narrows with Karen Brady moving right into contention. Two goals from Chelsea's Mark Steen help Karen to be manager of the week. 15 points leaves her just two behind Roy. Frantic transfer activity led to a big improvement from Lennox Lewis. A goal from Spurs newcomer Ronnie Rosenthal earned the Lewis Camp's second highest score of the week. But surely this sublime assist from Lennox Lewis's midfield player David Roadcastle was worth double points. It's healthy mid-table status for Frank after two fabulous goals from his midfield. First, Ryan Giggs weaving best-like through the QPR defence, and then Blackburn's Jason Wilcox belting the ball past Hans Sager. Oh dear, this week's guest Roddy Doyle sinks into the bottom three, with minus points conceded by the likes of Grobbler and, more unusually, Gary Pallister. A last team changes from assistant manager Pat Vanden Howe failed to stem the tide for Mandy Smith. Goal conceded by Ian Walker of Tottenham, amongst others, helped open up a daunting 17-point gap to nearest rival Peter Cook. But positions can change quickly, and so complacently for Net Lennox is not required. Andrew and Roddy are all locked in a typical relegation dogfight at the bottom. Oh, excellent. Well, well done, Stato. Good well, lord. Yeah. <laughs> Very, yeah, very yeah, no, I particularly liked an oh dear this week's guest. <laughs> that was good, that was wasn't very it? good. Definite John Craven. There. Anyway, shall we shall we wake up the guest? Yeah, hold on, hold on. Now we've got the chance. Let's just let's just see if there's any football on the telly. Okay. Then. You've been hoovering just as there's an exciting bit of football on the telly. <laughs> there you go. I don't know. You, 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 shouldn't, you shouldn't talk to your mother well, like that, I don't It really think. was my mother, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Just as it was David Pleat. Anyway, let, let's wait. <laughs> wait <up there. laughs> hey, it's Roddy Doyle and Richard Little John! <laughs> Oh, what a party that was, eh? Mm -hmm. If you want to get rid of your jackets, I mean, and your sleeping bags, you... Oh, yeah, I'm, I'll shove them out of the way for you. Good to you look after the guests and all that. Did you get a good night's kit on that, on that sofa? Nope. No, well, fair enough. 
So, Roddy, I should say straight away that I beat you in the cup, in the fantasy cup. Yeah, a wonderful week. result. Hold yeah. Up. Minus two, minus six. Yeah, that's really a <laughs> great <laughs> fantasy game. It's a battle of the giants. I'd love to hear that here. I'd love to hear yeah. that at 20 to, 20 to 5 on a Saturday. Yeah, well, it's marvellous to get minus two and then think you've won. <laughs> <laughs> Only fantasy league can do that. How did you do in the cup, Richard? We went out mm. to a minor side. <laughs> Easily. We won. got minus two as well. Yeah. Who, who beat you? Was it Andrew Ridgely? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You've taken it well. <laughs> yeah, basically what happened was only four people from our league got through. It was a bit like the real FA Cup in that uh, all the big names lost, apart from the, t the leader, who's Roy Hassidy stays in. And uh, who else kept in? Only Karen Brady actually beat someone from another league. I got yeah. absolutely hammered, as predicted last week, I have to say. So the cup was a bit of a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> no, we probably won't mention it again. Yeah. Just pretend that it never happened. No, yeah. we won't. Of course we will. Well, I'm still in it. You're still in it, yeah, so I'll so definitely right. pretend it never happened. <laughs> right then, guys. Actually, talking about the cup, uh, the real cup, uh, Chelsea got through this week, and you're yeah. a Chelsea fan. I am. And so am I. So what do you think? First trophy for 23 years? No, they'll be beaten by Oxford. Yeah, of course they will. <laughs> <laughs> I just said it in an optimistic way. <laughs> well, that was a classic Chelsea optimism. Yeah. <laughs> now we'll lose. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, how does a man from Dublin become a Chelsea supporter? Because Irish football is appallingly bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> Chelsea supporters. <laughs> 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 there are degrees of badness. Yeah. You know? yeah. So who was, that must have been, uh, you must have been a fan during the great late 60s, 70s. Team. I was, yeah. Yeah, it was a great time to be a Chelsea fan. Well, that's you know, the thing, the trouble... the only time to be a Chelsea fan. Yeah, in fact, yeah, that's <laughs> right. But it was great, like, actually, in the teen years, it was a great preparation for adult mm. life, all the constant disappointment. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and every little victory was a major triumph. It really, you know, it's exactly like life. We've got, we've got a, a bit of classic Chelsea, actually, with a, a hero of yours, Charlie Cook, like in action. There's Charlie. And on the... yeah, that was the high point of my life. That, that particular moment. That moment there was the high point of my <laughs> oh dear, life. Oh, that's rather sad. But you <laughs> <laughs> it's actually very, very sad. <laughs> but what? you won the Booker Prize, yeah. didn't you? Nothing. You know, <clears> nothing throat> compared throat> to that. Really? Yeah. Mm. When, when Charlie Cook, when Osgood scored that goal, I ran out into the back garden, did a lap of honour. I had scored the goal, went in, my dad congratulated me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it wasn't the same. The Booker Prize was nothing compared to that. So if now... It would have been it, ridiculous if when you got the Booker Prize you'd gone and run around your honor. garden. <laughs> <laughs> so if now, if, if now you had the choice between winning the Booker Prize or Chelsea winning the FA Cup, again, <clears> what would it be? Oh, Chelsea to win the FA Cup. Really? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Oh, that's very good of you. I think you've got more chance to get another Booker Prize. <laughs> <laughs> if that's what I've got more spent. chance to get the Booker Prize from. <laughs> the Nobel Peace Prize I'll win before they win the Cup. I must ask it, Richard, um, you brought this with you to the party uh, on Wednesday <laughs> night. What, what, does, what is he? Can that you... is the Grinch's Dog Cup. Grinch's Dogs are the name of your, your fantasy league <laughs> team, I should point now, out. Now, I'll tell you about this. This was in the 1962. World Cup finals in Chile. England playing Brazil. Brazil won 3 1. In the middle of the game, a dog runs on. Greavesy chases after it, catches the dog. It's the only thing he's got anywhere near all afternoon. <laughs> Picks up the dog, he's carrying it off the pitch, and it pisses down the front of his shirt. <laughs> <coughs> so amuses Garincha that at the end of the game, the dog is still wandering around in the stadium. Garincha adopts it, puts it under his arm, takes it back to Brazil. I think it's in the side of Graves he adopted it, put it under his nose, and it's been there ever since. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so why the trophy, then? The point of this, this is um, a trophy which is awarded to uh, a certain group of Tottenham supporters for funk beyond the call of duty in, in following Tottenham. You get extra points, a bit like a, a bit like the fantasy league, really. If you go to a home game, you get one point. In a away game, you get two points. If you're going to see the youth team at Chesson on a Thursday, you get five points. And, uh, <laughs> you, and you won it, won't I've you? never won it, no. You stole no. it, then? Or... <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of people are going to watch Tottenham to win that rather than to see Tottenham. That's well, I, I think that at the moment, this is about all we have got a chance of winning, to be perfectly honest. Roddy, you've written quite a lot of your books have got a sort of backdrop about football. I mean, the van mm. in particular yeah. happens against the backdrop of the, the 1990 World, World Cup. Cup. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a bit in it, um, which I remember, about um, Dunphy's, which is a, a reference to Eamon Dunphy, the uh, Irish TV pundit. Could you, I wonder if you'd, you'd mind reading that. Oh, look, there's a copy of it. The there's book. a copy of it. <laughs> A large and a Dunphy. What? said Jimmy Senior. 
He looked down at the customer, a young fellow about young Jimmy's age, with his pals. A large and a dumpy, he said again. He was grinning. What's a dumpy, Jimmy, Sen Jimmy Senior wanted to know. A sausage, said the young fellow. Sausage, large, Jimmy Senior called over his shoulder to Bimbo. He looked back at the young fellow. Are you going to explain this to me, he asked. Sausages are like pricks, right? Okay, fair enough. And Eamon Dunphy's a prick as well, said the young people. <laughs> <laughs> so why does everybody dislike Eamon Dunphy so much? Well, after we beat England one all, and then <laughs> we were beaten by Egypt nil all. I don't remember that. <laughs> we were beaten by Egypt nil all. Dreadful yeah. game. And, I think uh, what I loved about that is when they line up for the national mm, anthem at the beginning mm. of the e Egypt game. Do you remember that? The, the Egyptians, when they lined up, went... Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, carry on. <laughs> well, it was... Uh, to be, uh, to make a, a, a long story short, there was a clash of personalities between Jack Charlton, the Irish manager, and Eamon Dunphy. And whereas Jack Charlton has a, has a personality, Dunphy doesn't. Ooh. Most of the country were up for Dunphy, you know. So I just didn't, I've no hostility against Dunphy myself, but I just wanted to capture the feeling of the time in Dublin. So basically, well, that stuff about um, Dunphy's and, and sausages and Eamon Dunphy is nothing to do with this. What's Eamon Dunphy? Ah. <laughs> That's a genuine picture of him at Millwall. I remember that when I was a kid, seeing that in a programme, thinking that couldn't be. Could it? And I've never found out, so if you're watching, Eamon... Um, mm. Sorry. <laughs> Richard, if we could uh, uh, ask you about... The, the Sun have recently claimed Fantasy League as their own, haven't they, really? They've started their own Fantasy League game. They've right? got a fantasy league, yeah, running. There's 400,000 people have signed up for it. Yeah. God it's a different God. game, though, isn't it? It's not exactly the same rules. Well, I think the difference between all the other fantasy games, the, I mean, the Telegraph are running one, aren't they? And mm. I think the Mirror have finally caught up with it as well. <laughs> is that we... <coughs> I think we had started before yours, didn't we? Yeah. Never mind, sorry. Funny old, <laughs> funny old game fantasy league, isn't it? Yeah. Unlike ours, I think in all of these, you can have the same players so that everybody can pick David Seaman and Andy Cole. Mm. Whereas... Ours is almost more real, is you can't have the same player playing for two clubs. But I was looking at the rules of the, of the Suns game, mm. and it's things like you get, uh, you get points if your player scores the best sort of rating in the Sun. So you have to buy the Sun to know whether you've got good points. It's clever, that, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's two points for an assist, two for a goal, five for buying the Sun. Seven for voting, I think it's seven for voting Conservative and uh, ten for having big tits, I think. Was the <laughs> size, it, yeah. It's an incredible system, but uh, yeah. I'm playing, obviously. Yeah, obviously. Goes They're coming on. <laughs> I think, actually, I think we've got a clip here of the Sun's dream team. <laughs> Just no, joking, Richard. Just to joking. Richard. I'm sorry, Richard. Just why? To, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, why? Good point. No, no. The, the um, are you are you in that one as well, or are you just in our one? Are no, you, I'm just in this one. But my son, who is the assistant manager of this team, yeah, has entered the uh, the Sun League, and let's hope he does better for us in the Sun League than he's been doing in this one recently. Will, William is in, in the audience. <laughs> William, <laughs> William Littlejohn. Little now, as I remember, William. At the auction, you seem to be picking most of the team, and oh, Richard, he hadn't got a clue. He wanted to buy Alan Gilzean at one time. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't do it without me, no ah. way. Sorry? Couldn't do it without me. Not no, at of all. course not. What's the difference between your, the team that you've got in the Sun League and the team that you pick for your dad? It's better, my one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> what can you say? We've got, actually, interestingly, Roddy, I think we've got a breakdown of your team's performance, and I think the problem seems to be lack of goals up front. <laughs> you see, so far, you've scored, only scored two goals yeah. since it started. And it was actually a full-back scored one of them. <laughs> yeah. Who was that? Julian Dix. Oh, right. And so I think Brian Dean has got an assist for you, and that's one it so, yeah, far. so far. And we actually had a look at Brian Dean's statistics, because he looked like a good, good boy, I think, when you got him. You see, last season, playing for Sheffield United, he ended up with 71 mm -hmm. Fantasy League points. <laughs> Yep. Which in 41 games is incredible going by Fantasy League standards. Breathtaking. And then before our league started this season, he's still got 34 points. Yeah. So it's, looking, I it's all really looking brilliant for yes. Brian Dean. And then you bought him. I think. Yes. <laughs> and I paid £5 million for him. You <laughs> <laughs> and you've got Grobolar yeah, in Grobolar goal, which is always, goal. A, always Yeah, a my favourite African. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. He's a character. He's yes, he's oh, Brucey. Guy. People always say that he's a character. We've got a shot of Bruce here at his lovable best. 
Who's got McManaman? And... <laughs> I was abroad on Saturday. William was managing. I was listening to World Service, the crackly thing. They've got the Norwich Liverpool game on. <laughs> Gets right to the end. McManaman is, is through. Clear on goal. I'm going, yes, three points. <laughs> Gun handled outside the area. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. He gets sent off. That's no consolation. I have lost three points. <laughs> <laughs> you bastards. <I'm> <laughs> um, okay, have we got a breakdown of, of Richard's team? Because it is. See, see, you've sort of done it everywhere, Richard. You've got six goals, seven assists, seven clean sheets. You are Mr. Consistency. So they say. So you've got Beardsley as well, and uh, Beardsley, obviously a great player. We've got, we got a clip of him, I think, somewhere. This is him against QPR. Oh, Brilliant guy. Great play. Since Beardsley's been playing with Andy Cole, I think he's come into his own, because at Newcastle now, the chant is Andy Coley gets the ball, he scores a goal. Excuse and me, can I just get yeah, sure. the rubbish out? Although when he came to Chelsea, the Chelsea fans very cleverly shouted, Andy Coley gets the ball, he does sod all, I remember. Well, I didn't say sod, actually. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it, I mean, they've got, we've had a lot of um, requests, actually. We've had a lot of letters asking to hear football chants sung on the show. But I think to do that, what we really need is a professional singer, you know, preferably one who's known for having a sing-along style. Oh, it's what we need. Oh, fly. <laughs> fly. fly me, it's Max Bygrave. Max Bygrave. Oh, bless you. Now, here's, here's the one that you'll all remember. <laughs> we'll see you all outside. We'll see you all outside. We'll see you all. <laughs> We'll see you all outside. <laughs> I'm singing. My old man said, be an Arsenal fan. I said, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and if the opposition are Liverpudlians, what's it like to have no job? <laughs> what's it like to have no job? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hey, hey, hey. Luther Blissett. <laughs> Everybody, no, 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 no. Come on, sing. No, 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 no. And hey, you. No. Hey, 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 hey. Luther Blissett. Keep it Six going. No, no, to Max Bygrave's forehead there, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, are th th there any chants at Spurs that uh, you're, particularly <laughs> you're particularly fond of, Richard? Well, I still think back to the wonderful day when Peter Shilton came keeping goal for Forrest after he'd been caught in a compromising position in his Jaguar. Yes, I don't know if we can mention these things, but carry on. And he, was, <laughs> he was greeted with that wonderful chant of Peter Shilton, Peter Shilton. Does your missus know you're here? <laughs> which, which spread right round the ground in about 30 seconds. <laughs> Tell me something. Yeah, Max Bygrave's just turned up. Really? Oh, I, I just nearly fell over a squirrel in the alley there, frightened me to death. Go on. Go on, Aldi. Oh, yeah. Daisy, Daisy, <laughs> give me your ads. I haven't got time for a sing song now, really. Now, thanks very much. That's uh, Brian Clough. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone, anyone, are there, are there any Irish chants? What's, what's that noise? What, what, terrible, what? What's that? Ladies, it's Basil Brush, ladies and gentlemen! Yeah. 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 Fantastic! <laughs> First appearance on the BBC for 13 years. 14 years, 14 do you years, mind? I'm sorry, Basil. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, um, can I tell a poem? Yeah. Right. His wife has a musical nature. She can noodle and whistle and hum. She goes out as fiddle as a fiddle and comes home as tight as a drum. What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? Speak to Chato. Chato, Chato, Mr. Chato. <laughs> what a funny name. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? They're getting on like a house on fire. <laughs> So, Basil, when, well, you, you've been interested in football all oh, your life? Oh, yes, yeah, since I was a little kid, little cub, really. Yes, yeah. I've, um, my team has done very well, really, very well. 
And you, I understand you used to like Billy Wright when you were a... Oh, that's right, I did. Uh, and there's a, a joke about Billy Wright. What Is about it? Billy Wright? What a cheer he got when he came on. Core. He forgot to put his shorts on. I can't breathe. I think we've got a clip of we've got a clip of Billy Wright in yes, action. Go on, Oh, there he is. He's a match refereed by the biggest schoolboy oh, of all time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what is it that the men do standing up, ladies do sitting down, and dogs on three legs? Shake hands. Marby, <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> all 14 years' material coming out in one go. <laughs> uh, so, Basil, your team. Let's have a look at your team. Well, I've got. Um, uh, Lido, uh, Lido, um, Lido Lido and Lido McClosco uh, yes. in goal. <laughs> Mr. Rolf, Ludo. Raw yes. Fox, of course, as someone pointed out in the and, audience. Um, there. Who else, Mr. Mr. Um, uh, 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 Tony Adams is your best defender. Oh yes, yes. He's got points. eleven points for you. Yes, marvellous. Uh, <laughs> no need to speak to him like that. Just because he's, just because he's a fox. <laughs> 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 well, oh, I'll get it. Sorry, that's uh, too many people turning up here tonight. Is he in it tonight? Oh, hello. Right. Um, it's that Italian bloke who was at the party last night. Said he... oh, no, 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 no. no he's, he said he's left his shirt. Oh, yeah. well, let him in. Let him in. I shall get him in. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, in. Come in, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Step out and I'll, uh, I'll just I'll... get the shirt out. It's <laughs> not, not easy, is it? You all right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he goes. Thanks. He's a strange board, isn't he? He is. Yeah. Ciao. <laughs> he's changed a bit, though, he? Yeah, he's yeah, pulled a bit yeah. of weight. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, he's playing for Celtic tomorrow. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that's right. <laughs> you I never know who's going to turn up next. Dear goodness me. Oh, he's fallen oh, over. <laughs> <laughs> And now, Felix from the Flames. <laughs> this week, would it have mattered if it hadn't have gone in? Just as bad. All right, Clive, this isn't Paul Call, 1994. This is Argentina, 1978. You're refereeing the World Cup game between Brazil and Sweden. Well, first of all, I'm not satisfied with that. That's not the regulation size of the goals. I'm not having that. Look at it. <laughs> That's not good enough. And look at that corner flag. Oh. That's too low. I'm is not that, having it again. Just no, it's not. Clive. I don't I care what it is. Sake. Hey. What? what do you think you're doing? That's a handball. Well, okay, I've just argued with you. I'm not having it. That's that. All right, and Come any more. Wait, yeah, you, you stay away. You keep far away. And next, <laughs> get away. Any more of that, and you'll have the red card, all right? I'm not having right, it. Uh, Frank, uh, you be the Lino who took the corner, right? And I'll be Zico who headed it in. Now, uh, as I say, I'm sorry, Mr. Thomas. I wonder, could you just tell us in your own words what happened? Well, David, it's Puth Call and not uh, Buenos Aires, thank God for that. It was, it's, it's nearly times, injury time now, and, and I'm standing waiting for this corner to be taken. The Brazilian takes quite a time to take the corner. I'm speaking to the Swedish goalkeeper. The goalkeeper says, how long to go? And I said, well, it's just times. Incidentally, this is the watch as well. That's that the actual watch. And that's the whistle. Could they snatch it right at the desk? Hold on, I don't look very Brazilian, do I? I should do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in the lean, yo! Will you go up with it? Calm oh, down, Zico. You're too hyperactive, you are. You almost wish to be caffeinated, mate. First <laughs> <laughs> time! All right, all right, hold on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Will you get on with it? Hold on, I've been meaning to finish this for ages. <laughs> I don't know what you're making such a fuss about. You know, referees never blow the whistle until the ball's in mid-air over the halfway line. Play Barry Davis. We make it time now. But it's what Clive Thomas makes at the count. Ronaldo right up on the line in front of uh, Hellstrom. Oh, that's swerving viciously. And it's turned in. Magnificent goal. <laughs> <laughs> no, the referee, I don't, he hasn't given it. He has not given the goal. 
He has not given the goal. Zico flung himself at it. The ball came off his head and into the corner. But Clive Thomas... <laughs> Well, Clive, it was a, a very controversial decision. You've taken a lot of stick for it over the years, but now is your chance on national television to defend that decision. That's great. Giving me the first opportunity Aldi, to explain... Aldi, yeah? four o'clock. Right. Well, four yeah, but hold on, I was going to tell you... <laughs> hey, give me a chance. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hold on. Look. FIFA regulations quite simply. It's oh, a letter. more mail. More mail. A lot. Oh, we've been having quite a lot of uh, mail, actually. I, I had a letter from uh, Gary Bailey of Ward End in Birmingham, and it said, uh, Dear Frank, I know you are a West Brom fan, but all my family support Port Vale. My dad always says that when West Brom played Vale in the 1954 Cup semi-final, the penalty that won the game for West Brom wasn't a penalty at all, because the foul was well outside the area. Can you please show a clip of this incident? No. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got a letter here from <laughs> Joanne Conley. Uh, it says, Dear David, does not address to you for some reason. Nice. Alan, Do I not like that? Alan, <laughs> Alan Hansen is always going on about players being properly positioned at corners. Could you show us a clip that explains this concept? Let's have a closer look at that. <laughs> Is this properly positioned or proper position? <laughs> well, it's a very old thing, that, isn't it? Valderrama just doesn't seem bothered about it. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Oh, yeah, do it again, mate. Get, get your hands right in there. <laughs> Can you get that bit round the side? Oh, that's, that's good. <laughs> so, it's been great. Thanks very much for coming. Thank you, thank you very thank much, you. Roddy. Thank you very much, Richard. Basil. Cheers, Basil. Uh, next week's guest managers will be Peter Cook and Andrew Ridgely. So, thanks very much and good night. Night. <laughs>to write to us or if you want more information about playing fantasy league our address is fantasy football league p.o box 168 london wc 2 h 7 bu greatest downhiller, handled the flag at the opening ceremony, he handled the adulation of the fans, he handled the jet set lifestyle, but could he handle the biggest day of his life? Oh, I had uh, so much pressure on me because it was in Austria and uh, um, I had, to, have, I had to, to win this race for me and for Austria. <laughs> So and it was very hard for me because I had number 15 and Bernard Russi with number 3 had a, a very um, a fast time and a comfortable lead uh, 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 to have a flank. So I thought the only chance what I have is to, to, to risk everything. The hero of Austria takes the leap well, survives it well, hugs the course, sits down, gets a lower line if he can. There's the time, it's coming up now, 145, he's done it, Kramer's done it, and this crowd go wild. Love and Deception lie in store for Ren and Stimpy in 25 minutes.